Good afternoon. We are going to review problem 11 to 25. And this is an essential problem to understanding what goes on in this chapter. So, this is a problem of a grocery manufacturer or producer or whatever who's had a lot of errors. And what we're asked to do in this problem is to determine for each misstatement, identify one or more types of controls that were absent. For each misstatement, identify the transaction-related management assertion that has not been met. And then for each misstatement, suggest a control that may have prevented or detected the misstatement. Remember what we said about internal controls? Internal controls are there to prevent errors. Okay, so that's what we're going to focus on. So the first one is, this is problem 1125, page 362. On the last day of the year, a truckload of beef was set aside for shipping, but was not shipped. Because it was still on hand, the inventory was counted. The shipping document was dated the last day of the year, so it was also included as a current year sale. They want us to tell them, they want us to answer, what was the control that was missing? What was the uh, management assertion that was affected? And how can we fix this? So let's look at the first one. First one, control activities missing were documents and records. We'll talk about the document in a moment. Transaction management assertion that was affected was cut off. And suggested fix is a simple sign that says don't count. That's what they were, they were missing. Because they counted something that shouldn't have been counted. Okay. For the second one, it says the incorrect price was used on sales invoices for billing shipments to customers. Because the wrong price was entered into the computer master file of prices. Because the wrong price was entered into the computer master file of prices. So we're talking about an incorrect price, and again, this is the, the control activity missing in documents and records. The assertion affected was accuracy, and the suggested fix is that we make sure that changes are reviewed. Any changes that happen are properly reviewed. And that's the second one. The third one, a vendor invoice was paid even though no merchandise was ever received. The accounts payable software application does not require the input of a valid receiving report number before payments can be made. Okay, so here's a, here's a situation where we paid for something that we didn't receive. Okay. Authorization is one of the controls, and documents and records are also one of the controls. Now, authorization, understand that software can authorize, make authorizations, and that's what's missing here. Software should be able to make an authorization and say, okay, to pay. When you pay for something that you don't have, that's a problem with occurrence. Okay? And the suggested fix here is to reprogram the AP software so that it can't happen. Right? That's number three. Number four, employees in a receiving department took sides of beef for their personal use. When a shipment of meat was received, the receiving department filled out a receiving report and forwarded it to the accounting department for the amount of goods actually received. At that time, two sides of beef were put in an employee's pickup truck rather than in the storage freezer. I don't know how many of you know what a side of beef is, but it's a huge piece of meat. It's half of a cow. Okay, so these people are receiving this merchandise, and instead of putting it where it's supposed to be, in the freezer, they're putting it in their pickup trucks to go home for a barbecue or something. So the answer to this one is, this is... Completely physical control over assets. 
they get this inventory in, someone should be making sure that it's going where it's supposed to go and not in these people's trucks. Again, we have a situation where we're paying for something that we don't have. We don't have this inventory any longer. It's in somebody's backyard. And the suggested fix is to, pardon the pun, beef up security. We need to have stronger security. Okay, that's number four. Number five, an accounts payable clerk process payments to himself by adding a fictitious vendor address to the approved vendor master file. So he has a case of a clerk overstepping his limits and having payments made to, to him. Okay. This is clear separation of duties. Separation of duties. Okay. And again, you're paying for something that you don't have. So that's a, that's a problem with the currents. And you need to restrict the AP clerk. You have to fire him and hire a new one. And the new one would be restricted. Okay. Number six. During the physical count of inventory of the retail grocery, one counter wrote down the long description of several products and miscounted the quantity. I don't know how many of you have ever done um, inventory, but generally speaking, there's a team of people who are going around counting, and then there's a backup team that makes sure that they counted what they were supposed to count and that it's accurate and it's the right colors and right description and so on. So, obviously, that didn't happen in this case. So, the answer for number six is this is independent checks on performance. So, this backup crew would independently check what the crew, the initial crew, did. Here's a, here's a management assertion violation of accuracy. So, whatever was recorded was not accuracy, accurate. And we need to follow up counts by staff. Follow up all counts by staff. Okay, that's number six. Number seven. A salesperson sold an entire carload of lamb at a price below cost because she did not know the cost of lamb had increased in the past week. Now, this problem is very much like the second one. The second problem, if you remember, the incorrect price was used on sales invoices, okay, but there's an essential difference between number seven and number two, and that is volume. I don't know how many of you know what a carload is, but a carload is a lot of product. product. Carload is, a, you're talking about a freight car, freight cars are huge, and this was a huge amount of, of uh, inventory that was sold at a price that was incorrect. So here we're talking about authorization. Someone should have been there to authorize this transaction because of the volume involved. Now it's a real sale, but it just wasn't accurate. It wasn't accurate. The prices were wrong. We need to make sure there's a current price list and also that there is a proper authorized person here. Proper authorization. And the last one, last but not least, <clears throat> a vendor's invoice was paid twice for the same shipment. Second payment arose because the vendor sent a duplicate copy of the original two weeks after the payment was due. Okay. What's happening here? Here's a clear case of them not having the proper documents to pay their, their bills. Okay, and the document that's missing is a receiving report. If they were using receiving reports, this never would have happened. So the answer here is documents and records and occurrence. Again, they're paying for something that they don't have because they paid for something twice. And the answer is to require receiving reports. The fix for this is to require receiving reports. Okay. These kinds of errors are errors that the auditor finds during his audit, during her audit, and these fixes are 
suggestions made to management as to what should be done. Okay, a very important part of the audit. Okay.